Trucker Dave here, and today we're back on the Torino. In the last video, I told you about a few things. I just hadn't made it home yet, so now I've made it home, and we've got to get this mess cleaned out so I can get to work on this car and show you what I'm planning on doing. One of the things I have to do before I get started is going to be kind of a task. In order to get this out, I have to get this out. But in order to get this out, I've got to fix the brakes because that's the whole backside is covered in brake fluid. So I can move this because this won't stop. And then I've got to move this out, but tires went flat on it. So, and then I got to clean off this. Uh, I was very gentle with the seats. Uh, they're for sale, by the way. And then I've got to clean off that. It's just, it's a mess. I'm just dealing with the typical lack of garage space. I would have a lot more room if I didn't have a whole lot more stuff. But if I had a whole lot more room, I would need a whole lot more stuff. So the struggle is real. So what I'm going to do tonight, uh, I'm not going to move any of this stuff tonight. I've got too much stuff to take care of because, well, real life comes first. We're going to clean off the hood. We're going to WD-40 up a bunch of bolts that are rusty, like on the exhaust and whatnot. Get that all ready to go because we're going to take the pipes off. We're not going to take the exhausts off in the car. I'm just going to undo the pipes from the bottom and pull the engine straight out. And then uh, once we get the engine out on the stand, i got to go to the pawn shop tomorrow and get a stand. Once we get the stand and get the two engines side by side, we'll swap everything over and the other engine will right in. So, so let's get to it. I'm probably going to have to get this from the bottom. I'm sitting here looking at this and realizing, well, yeah, my plan to get it from the top is probably going to be an epic fail. But that's what I excel at, so let's find out. Uh, yep. Yeah. Eh, it'll leave a mess on the floor, but it's nothing this garage hasn't seen before, so let's go to the other side. I would like to say this is easier to get to, but not really. I can hit it. But, truthfully, I'm going to have to hit it from the other side. But, you can see the data plate here. This is a 351 Cleveland. It's got a bunch of neat stuff here, so this is always neat to look over. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do with the air conditioning compressor, so I don't know if I'm going to leave it on or if I'm going to take all of this stuff off and maybe eventually do something like a vintage air. So, I, I don't know yet. That's something i've got to i've got to think about so i uh, guess we'll I'd be off to the next thing now okay what we're going to do now in putting the oil pan on is we're going to clean up these mating surfaces now if you're going to clean them up use something like this carburetor cleaner don't ever use brake clean brake clean leaves a film and you want these machine surfaces because they actually are machine smooth you want them as clean as possible and make sure you do your pan too so the RTV will have a good place to stick and bond to and you're gonna stop any future leaks you have so we're gonna clean these areas up and we're gonna put this oil pan on and then we'll do the same for the valve covers as you can see the engine got a little oily from sitting it was I think it's that marbles that I put in there so uh, we're going to have to clean all these surfaces off, finish scraping these gaskets and whatnot, and get all that cleaned up before we put the ga new gaskets down. Get all this cleaned up. And then uh, with the pan, the pan looks pretty good, but we've still got little gasket residue here and here. But for the most part, it's in really good shape. So let's get on with this, and we'll get this done. On the end gaskets here, we pulled them out. They're actually still in really good shape. Theoretically, you could probably reuse them. But we want to clean out here, and we have brand new ones of these. And uh, I'll explain why I didn't get a one-piece uh, oil pan gasket here in a minute. 
One of the easy ways to get in here is, like with one of these, is just a little screwdriver. You know, you don't have to be very hard. It'll uh, peel up, and a lot of times, if you just start pulling on it, it'll come up. Well, not there, but... So, yeah, just... So it just kind of comes right up, so... You don't want to mar the surface, but you do want to get it loose. And if you're if you're patient, it'll this old silicone will come up. That way, you have a clean mating surface for the new gasket. So after I got done preaching about using a one-piece gasket, why am I not using one? Well, the answer is simple. I just I I couldn't find one and I don't have time to order one. I got about two maybe three days for it gets really really cold here So and I kind of wanted to have these videos done before uh, I have to head back out. So That's why but I'll show you the proper way to put on a four-piece gasket. It's really not that hard It just takes a whole lot more uh, mm, Attention that's the word it takes a lot more attention. So let's get to it Okay, now that we got the gasket surfaces all clean, I have this Felpro kit that I bought. It's about 15, all together it was $17. So let's tear it apart and I'll show you what we got. Okay, so what I have here is the Felpro gasket kit for the 351, also the 6.6 .6 liter, 5.8 liter. It's the OS 30227C. That's the Felpro number for this. Yeah. And it's a four piece. So let me show you the pieces here. As we uh, take the gaskets out, we have the two side pieces here. And we have the two rubber pieces here. I'm not going to take them out just yet. They go on the end. So what you do is uh, we put these rubber pieces on first. And then, or we put these cork pieces on, make sure they're all sealed and where they need to sit. And then we have to put the, uh, these rubber pieces on next because they sit over the top of them. So it, it's kind of a dance and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so I was a little backwards. These little tabs here, there's a little spot for them right there where this thing goes in. So... It's got a little keyway here, more or less, and it just kind of slides into that, and this slides under there like that, and that's how it fits. So, but this is a very important corner. You need to make sure you have plenty of goop in this corner, or it won't seal and it'll start leaking. So let's get this thing gooped up and put together. Now a very important thing to, to make sure that when you're putting these engines together, is that you put the bolts in first. I know the silicone is drying. It's, it's going to take an hour to dry, so you got to be expedient, but don't be quick. Make sure you put several bolts in here and there. Get it all situated, because you don't want that gasket moving. So we're going to take our time. We're going to put the bolts in. Once we get all the bolts in, we'll start torquing it accordingly and get it put on. Well, we got the oil pan put on, and we got it all sealed up. Um... Make sure that when you're putting it together and you use the proper torque settings, I'm. everybody has their own way of putting an oil pan on. I'm not going to try to, it's not a really a pressurized item, but every bolt does have its own torque setting, like I said earlier. So, you know, if that's something that's important to you, and to a lot of people it is, and it should, as well it should be, honestly, uh, make sure you have these things torqued down and the gasket has not slid and is sitting in there proper in all the holes, so... Like this one is so you can actually it's kind of sticking out a little bit and you can kind of see in that little gap right there so these are things to be mindful of so tomorrow we get to do the other side okay so we've got the oil pan on I took the spark plugs out to look at the engine and these are the old uh, Oh, you can't really see them. They're the old split fires. I was going to reuse them. They're expensive spark plugs, but a lot of the problem they had with the split fires was they burned way too hot for the engine. And people had a lot of trouble with burning pistons and valves and aluminum engines especially because they're designed to burn hot. They're, they said they're performance, but it's not that they were any more performances. They were just getting hotter and burning 
a lot more of the residue fuel that was going out the tailpipe. So in some ways, yeah, but they're really not a performance item for the most part. They just burn a little hotter. Um, I was going to use them, but the split fires were never anything that turned out to be a good deal on an engine. So I'm going to use some traditional and make sure they're gapped properly when they go back in. It's getting a little late for tonight, so uh, I think I'm going to pack it in. Red will be here tomorrow. And we're hoping to have the engine pulled out of this tomorrow, and hopefully that's set in. So it's getting pretty cold, and I don't have, like I said, I don't have a heated garage, so we're going to pack it in tonight. I got about two more good days. So I'm hoping to have the old engine out tomorrow, and this one at least set in. And, uh, It'll be a good time, so we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so we've rolled the car outside. We're going to drain all the fluids. We I decided to drain the fluids outside because I don't want to make a mess inside because I'm going to have to lay on the floor, so let's get the fluids drained. So we got the radiator out. We got a little more room to work. We're going to take the hood off here in a minute. Um, there's the radiator right there. Made a little bit of a mess, but I'm going to clean up this area here so I can lie on the floor and move around on the dolly when I go underneath the car. So when we get underneath the car, we'll undo the motor mounts and the exhaust, and then we'll get the electrical unhooked, and she should be good to go. Um, probably going to take the air conditioning stuff out. I just don't ever use it, and it's just in the way, so... That shouldn't take too long. Okay. So what we're going to do now is with while the car's cleaned out, we need to undo the electrical. We're going to disconnect the air conditioning stuff. Turns out I'm going to have to keep it just because everything that's attached to it. And then uh, we'll undo the gas lines and the throttle lines. Then we'll jack the car up. We'll disconnect the transmission, the starter, and the electrical wires on the bottom of it and then we'll be good to go and the engine should come right out. So let's get to that. Okay, so here we are under the car. We've already got the torque converter unbolted. We're gonna get the exhaust unbolted here in a minute. It should come right out. We got four motor mount bolts and then uh, the thing should actually just come right out. So let's see if we can get all this out without breaking it and see what happens. We have everything in here disconnected. Um, now we have to hook up the chains. We made sure we undid the throttle linkage, the ground straps, and all the stuff on the underside. Um, spraying the exhaust down WD-40 the other day actually really helped. They came out a whole lot easier than I thought. They didn't require fire. So now we're going to hook up our chains. To the side of the engine there's actually points to lift on this thing so we'll hook the chain up and we'll get the engine hoist and we'll pick this thing straight out as you noticed i took it back down off the jacks we got it as low as i can go and uh, we're just going to pick it up as one unit so let's do that now all right it appears we have everything unhooked so we just have to get it to loosen up from the Oh, there we go. And get it over the uh, and get it over the mounting points, and she'll she'll just come right out. So let's continue to jack it up and see what happens. Either we'll come out or we'll break it. So, all right, got it. Yep. Okay, so she's loose. We've just got to get it over the cross member and we would have taken the engine mounts out on the cross member instead of the four bolts up, it would have come out a little easier. So that's something to remember next time. Oh, it's caught on now. So, yeah, she's coming. Maybe. Being difficult, but. Ah, we'll get it out. So, let's go. Alright. Ok, 
Okay, so the engine's coming out. The car went up quite a ways, so hopefully everything's clear and we don't have to flatten the tires. And we'll get this set up next to that, the other one, and we'll start swapping parts. And hopefully in a couple hours we can have that one. Hey, well that was frightening. We can have that one. Oh, nasty. Ready to go. So, this is what it looks like when everything falls apart. So, let's get this out and get the new one in. Stop. That's it. Good thing to remember when you're putting your exhaust manifolds on is the way these are designed and built, they got little hooks. So you put your first two bolts in right here, and when it's right side up, it just slips right in and hooks. So it's easier to do when the engine's right side up. But it just hooks right onto those two, and then it falls right in place to where the other bolts will just go right through the holes. Okay, now we've got all the accessories back on the engine. We're going to put the valve covers on, swap the wiring harness over. It's just plug and play. It's real self-explanatory. Put the valve covers on and then we'll drop it in and then we'll start, uh, we'll jack the car up. We'll connect everything on the bottom and then once that's all done, we'll put it on the top, set the timing and get her fired up. So let's get to it. Okay, so we got the engine put in the car. Um, that's all for tonight. And we're going to have to, from this point forward, we're going to have to put the valve covers on, get the timing set. We're going to have to hook the torque converter up and get all the bolts into the transmission. So we got our work set out, but for this video, I really wanted to be able to get the engine in. And uh, in the next video, we're going to have it all put together. And so... Yeah, and we're also going to do a video on the teardown on the old engine there, so I appreciate you watching. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to know, please like, share, subscribe, and we'll catch you later. Going? Yeah. you got to say that. Oh, I shook my head at you. Well, you... <laughs> <laughs> okay.